Well, it's Monday morning. I am back to get this pond uh, job started up again, and uh, I've had too much coffee this morning, and whoo, I'm wired up. So we're going to get to work pretty quick uh, to get some of this energy burn off. I've got the cats warming up now. As soon as they get warmed up here, we'll get started work. Just to take a look at the dam, nobody built that for me over the weekend, so I guess I'm going to have to do it. The hog is still sitting down there getting ready to get loaded, and uh, we're going to get some dirt in here, get that packed in, and start building this thing up in lifts. So at some point this morning, I do want to check and see how much higher the dam's got to go. And I'll get the laser out and uh, I'll bring y'all back when I get that information. All right, here's our original benchmark. Let's uh, see if we can get this thing set up here. All right, let's find the laser. There it is. We'll get this put on here and then we'll go check the height of the dam. Got it. All right, we're in the center part of the dam here and what I want to do now is raise that laser receiver up this stick until I find where uh, it hits that laser beam. And then the distance between where it's at now and where it will be will be the height that we need to raise this pond up. All right, it is at eight inches right now. Let's see how high we're gonna to have to raise this thing. I'm gonna start out at nine feet. And I wouldn't be that high, I hope. Nope, not quite nine feet, so let's lower it just a little bit. That is real close. That's it right there. All right, so we started out at eight inches and now we're at eight foot six. So you count the difference between eight inches and eight foot six, that gives us seven foot and 10 inches. So we gotta be seven foot and 10 inches higher than we are standing right now to get us at the same level as that benchmark. Now, that's not calculating freeboard and considering that's gonna be uh, the overflow area. So I've got to figure all that out, but right now I just wanted to get a general idea how much higher the dam's got to go. So I got that now, let's get started. Something else I'm curious about now is how deep the bottom of the pond is as it is right now. So let's measure that. We're going to go for right there. See how deep that is right there. All right, we got to put this back on the, I don't know if I got enough stick. Maybe I do. It helps if you turn it on. <laughs> That's real important. <laughs> right, we got the laser set up there and we got the uh, dam height calculated uh, over there where I was standing and the receiver is way up there. So based on that measurement right now, where we're standing, the water would be 10 foot, six inches deep. Now that I kind of got an idea how tall the dam's got to go and how deep we currently are in the bottom of the pond, uh, we can continue on with this job. I think Got the 313 in place. Let's climb up here on the hog and get this thing started up. I bet it fires up first time it turns over. Absolutely, the hog is reliable. Now then what I need to do is get my air conditioner set up. All right, there's half of my air conditioner. Let's get the other side. All right, we'll be good and cool today. Not really. All right, first thing this morning, I hit the side of the bed, so uh, at least I know my aim's off. <laughs> Let's see if how the day gets better. Strike number two, strike three, and I'm out. Get fired. 
it takes a little bit of time after the weekend to get all warm back up golly maybe not our strike three slow down get everything figured out this morning I'm gonna try not to get dirt in y'all on this load right here. This will do us in. This load. Can y'all still see over there? All right, let's go dump it. Straighten back up. The way y'all can see a little better. Got a couple loads in here now and uh i'm gonna keep doing this for a little while i'm gonna probably gonna do two wide through here to get it down to the other end of the dam and then come in here with a dozer slick it off and then pack it in and, and then we'll do the same process over and over and over over and over until we get the pond dam up seven feet high so uh i'll bring y'all back a little bit when we got a little bit more progress done so see you in a minute well, it's time for an update, and uh, it's actually the next morning from what you just saw when I was putting some more dirt on the dam here and uh, spreading it out and packing it in. So I want to talk about a little bit what I want to do this morning uh, to kind of help me get a little bit farther along on this dam project. Yesterday, I got several lifts put in and got that raised up pretty good. I haven't really checked it to see how high I actually got it. Look at that sunrise over the mountain this morning, too. That, that's absolutely gorgeous. But anyway, uh, so I got that raised up. I'm to a point now where where I'm entering the dam, uh, this is kind of getting a little bit steep right here. So it's time to, to take this dam and carry it on out over into this area here. So I've yet to dig out that core because I was using that to enter the, the dam area. So now then this morning, I want to core it out from right here up to that tree and get that done. And something else I want to do is clean up all this junk along the edge of the uh, pond dam and the where the pond actually is. All these piles of dirt right here, they gotta go this morning. I gotta get that stuff out of the way. And I'm thinking about now that I've got the dam, uh, you know, raised up pretty good ways, rather than hauling each load in here, I, actually what I'm thinking I'm gonna do now, uh, once I get all this junk cleaned up, is take take this dirt and casting it over and taking the dozer and push it on here and spreading it out. I'm thinking that might be a little bit more efficient. If not, then I'll go back to hauling it. Another thing I want to do too is the dam is really wide and I want to start building this side up and not using so much of my good feel. Start building this side up and packing it in as I come up as a slope. And I'm going to do that with a lot of this, this junk dirt I just talked about that's not really suitable for the actual dam, but it'll work good for the back side of it. I'll get these cats woke up this morning and uh, get my blood circulating <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll get started here in a few minutes. And 
action. All right, we are getting this dirt moved out of the way. I tell you what, you know, I mentioned this early on in the first video of this pond job. This is the first uh, big pond like this that I've ever built. And actually, the, probably the biggest job I've ever had moving this much dirt. And I'll tell you one thing, and that is for sure, is that I have a newfound respect for folks like Chris at Let's Dig 18 and Mike at Dirt Perfect. and. They're two of the guys that move the most amount of dirt on pond jobs like this. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to know how to build a pond. I have a, you know, a, a good idea of, of the construction of the pond. But where the respect comes from is the knowledge that they have in moving the dirt efficiently. And uh, so that's something I'm thinking about every single day I'm doing this job is how can I be more efficient at moving this much dirt? You know, the first thing you might say is, well, bigger equipment, and uh, that's true. A bigger haul truck, a bigger dozer. I'm, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the excavator I've got right now. Uh, but, you know, I may build one or two of these a year, and, uh, you know, all the equipment that I have is a decent size for me for what I do on a daily basis. So, I guess my thought is, is uh, what I think about is moving dirt more efficiently with the equipment that I have. Uh, so that is uh, what I'm constantly thinking about in doing this job. And it goes without saying, the more efficient you are, the more productive you are, and uh, the, the quicker you get the job done and uh, move on to the next job. So this is a job that I'm definitely enjoying and uh, I'm learning a lot from this. And uh, you know, the next one I do will be more efficient with it and then the next one after that will be more efficient. But I do watch a good bit of uh, Chris and Mike and uh, I learn from those guys and uh, I just get better at it each time. Another channel you might not know about, uh, some of you may already be watching, but it's uh, Dunsmore Moving Dirt. That uh, fellow's name's James, he's down in Texas, and uh, he builds a lot of ponds. Uh, well, they call them tanks down there, stock tanks. Small channel like me, but he's working hard at it, so uh, he's a good fella. All right, I'll uh, work on this a little bit more, get this uh, dirt moved, and uh, bring you back in a little bit. All right, it's time for an update. I've crawled up on the dozer blade here. If I don't fall off, uh, I'll give you all a little bit of a, a look at what I got done this morning, and uh, I'm hungry, so I had to get stopped there, but this is a good place to show you where we're at so far. Now, if you remember from uh, earlier in the video, actually just a few seconds ago, I guess, all that dirt was on that left side of the dam. That is now gone. I've got all that build over here. So all that pile you see right down through there around the, just on the outside of the, the, the dam that's being built, I just bailed all that out. Wow, that took a while. I've been working on that all morning. But uh, fortunately, I, I, was, uh, I called old Todd up at Digging Life 21. He also has another channel, Digging Deeper. I think we probably talked about two and a half hours. <laughs> through this, uh, digging this dirt out and throwing it on the other side of the road. So Todd, I appreciate it that you definitely passed uh, the time of uh, trying to get that all that dirt out. He was working on a job as well, uh, uh, doing a mowing the side of the road with the excavator. So uh, he was uh, he was doing a job where he needed to talk a little bit too. So anyway, Todd, appreciate it. Go check him out, Digging Life Deeper and Digging Life 21. He's got two channels and does excavation work. So check him out. 
Where I am now after lunch is I've already got the excavator up here. I uh, mentioned that. I'm going to dig that uh, core out down to right here. And then I'm going to start baling dirt out of this area over into the dam and get this tied in uh, up there as I'm working my way back up to where the spillway is going to be. All right, let's get down off this dozer here. That's where we are for now, and uh, we'll see y'all in a minute. another day working and uh yeah i've got a lot accomplished today it didn't get much done as far as building the dam height up but i did get a lot of uh i called it the junk dirt out of the way and uh got it set up for tomorrow we can really start uh putting some more dirt on the dam and getting it built up so let's take a look at where we are at the end of today you can see now i've got this in a whole lot better shape than it was uh you can actually see the shape of the dam now that's going to be my slope off down into the bottom of the pond so I got a little bit of good dirt around that edge right there to get out and throw it up here on the dam uh, tomorrow and get that packed in. But I got that shaped and transitioned all the way around now. And this is the side over here where I dug the core out a while ago and I got uh, two lifts back in there and got that packed in good. You saw that uh, as I was pushing that in and got that packed. So that's nice. I've got a pretty good chunk of dirt right in there that I will be able to take the excavator and scoop it up and just throw it over in there, spread it out and pack that down. So that should come up pretty quickly. And then there's a big old chunk of dirt right here that I can truck in there. And we've got a whole bunch of dirt in the middle that we'll use to uh, continue building this dam up. That's gonna do it for today and uh, I'll see you in the morning. All right, it's time for a little update and uh, kind of show you where we are. What you just watched was uh, doing the core area of the pond, which is this right here. And uh, so I got a little bit more of that done and got uh, the base material in that core and filled back up. And you watched that on Tuesday, and actually today is Thursday morning. So yesterday I worked a full day, uh, just worked hard yesterday, trying to get as much of this material moved as I could to try to catch up, because I'm way behind on schedule for what this job uh, uh, called for. And, well, there's just a lot of dirt to move. I just talked to the owner there, Jack, and man, I just underestimated the amount of dirt that it was going to take to move. But uh, we'll get it done, and I told him uh, we'll keep working on it. Uh, hopefully today uh, and tomorrow, i got a guy coming to help me tomorrow. Hopefully by the end of tomorrow, I'll have this dam uh, pretty much on grade, and uh, then I'll just like to finish up work, I hope. So let's take a look at where we are. So now then, after I started uh, cutting this core in and getting it filled in, most of my material for building that, well, all my material for uh, filling this core back in get packed come from there and then i've chewed out a bunch more dirt you can now see the bowl the bottom of the pond taking shape right here a lot of this dirt right here uh went into uh, building up the dam now you notice a significant difference in the dam now than when you last saw it just uh, a few minutes ago because i got a lot of dirt put in there and packed in now i did some measurements yesterday uh evening when i got off and Right here, the high part of the dam has still got to come up five and a half feet just to get water up to that grass line right there. Uh, but, but you get to get a better idea now, even standing up here, uh, where the bottom's going to be. And then uh, uh, keep filling this around all the way up to that corner, and then we'll come back around through here and keep building it up over there. I'm going to hold off on that area right there because that's my entry point for the dam. So I'm loading my dirt there, pulling up into there, and backing around the core of the dam and uh, or the pond dam and dumping dirt coming around through here but as i pan the job site now the uh you kind of see where we are and uh, man we got a lot left to do but uh we're gonna keep plugging at it and get it done 
Uh, keep moving right along. I don't know if anybody can tell I'm having fun or not, but I am absolutely loving this job. I may have underbid it and uh, it's going to take me longer than I thought, but it's not going to cost the customer anything extra, that's for sure. But I am absolutely loving this job and, uh, and one thing about it, this being the first big pond I've built, I've learned a lot from this job, which will carry over into the next ones and uh, I'm thankful for it. Okay, I'll get this uh, load right here dumped and uh, I'll keep pushing on some dirt. All right, I'm gonna get this one dumped and I've got uh, five and a half feet to go building this dam up. So I'll check back with y'all in just a little bit. now and I've got uh, I don't know several loads of uh, dirt dumped on top of the dam there and uh, I've got to work my way on over here to that dip is a low spot but I want to stop for just a minute and talk about job site setup logistically what I've been looking to try to figure out is how to move the dirt the most efficiently to be profitable and this job has been a challenge I've been trying to figure out how to set up where to get positioned and I know that evolves with each job. You work a certain area, then you move to another area uh, to get set up for that area. So I think I've finally figured out something for now that's working pretty good. I wanna go over that, because there's guys that uh, have a ton more experience than I do uh, doing these kind of jobs. And so I'm anxious to see what other people might say about this as well. Let me show you now where my water line uh, is. I've kind of known this since I set the job up. But relative to the pond dam and where the equipment's setting, my water line is right straight across through there and then right straight across through here over into those, those tr that tree area. So this is where uh, my water line, this is where I've got set up so far. And what I've been doing, you saw in the video, is pulling in there, dumping the dirt, coming off the hill, loading, going up through there and backing into the dam. That is working really good. I'm in the center part of the pond which makes it uh, efficient, I believe, uh, the way that the truck is running. 
and now I've got the, the excavator set up kind of like on a perch there to load with. Now that I'm almost running out of dirt that I can reach at in my uh, area there that I can grab. So what I'm thinking is to bring the dozer in now and come up here to this water line and start shaping the pond. And as I'm shaping the pond down to that grade where the bottom is there, I'm gonna take my dirt and push it over there where the excavator is and continue loading the way that I'm doing. And I know I'm gonna run out of dirt right here and over there eventually, uh, and then I'd have to reposition, I guess, and come over here. So that's my thought, and uh, I think that's more efficient than moving the excavator down through there and, and creating a place to set up the truck and doing that. So I'm gonna try this for a few minutes and see how it works, and uh, you know, like I said, I'm learning. I'm trying to figure this out, and uh, you don't know unless you try it. So here we go. One problem I can see already is that this ground is hard. Golly, bum, it's hard. Good thing I'm pushing down here. There's a sample of what I'm talking about. Um, I think I like that. You know, if you had two people here working, a guy could be pushing dirt off in here like that, and they can also, when he gets some up out, he could hop in the truck, move the truck around. I think that would be really efficient. Working by myself, um, I think this is gonna be efficient anyway. Let's take a look around now at the end of the day. Uh, you see how I've got that slope now. That's uh, uh, the slope of the bank pond coming down into the bottom there. And of course, all this loose dirt right here, hiding the bottom, so to say. But uh, you can tell I got a bunch of dirt put on the dam now and got all that packed in, so that's uh, looking pretty good. So that's going to take care of it for today. I will be back in the morning. All right, I have made it back this morning, and uh, as you can tell in the background there, I have some help this morning swinging some dirt over in this pond dam. And uh, that's Mike. I met Mike at a uh, cat demo day at Stowers in Knoxville, I guess a couple weeks ago now. And uh, he let me know he'd been watching the channel and enjoyed it and we talked a lot a little bit about it and mike has a ton of experience running heavy equipment and uh so he he said if you ever need some help just let me know and i'll be glad to come help you for a day and just already this morning we've been working together uh, uh him swinging dirt over into the pond dam and then i've been taking a dozer and uh leveling that out and filling it in and then i'm taking the packer and running over and packing it in but we'll talk to Mike here in a little bit and uh, get to know Mike a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try to offer him some money, <laughs> see if I can hire him. But uh, he's got a full-time job working for a city and uh, I think he likes his job pretty good. But anyway, I'm gonna set y'all up on a tripod and watch this work going on. I tell you right now, this is the first time that I've had both these big machines running at the same time. And I've already stopped by, <laughs> I already stopped Mike there at one point and said, man, I love this right here. Uh, this is great to see both these machines running and have an experienced guy like Mike on that excavator. And I'm sure he'll be in the dozer here a little bit later and uh, I am glad he's here today. already crawled out the excavator and uh i think he's on water break or something yeah. what's going on mike uh taking a, a little dirt hey uh, i've already told the folks that i was going to offer you some money <laughs> we're going to enter in negotiations for uh uh a new employee for tristar digging uh here in a little while so y'all stay tuned and see what happens 
Now his boss might be watching this video too, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so uh, Mike, as I mentioned a while ago, Mike has got a ton of experience uh, running a dozer and excavator. So kind of what, kind of give a snapshot of what you do. Uh, well, I've got a, I actually work for a local government up in the area that I'm at. Been there 29 years, started as an operator. But before that, uh, Worked custom excavating for contractors, then I had my own business on the side for about seven years. Uh, raised kids, kind of put that on the sideline, <laughs> raised kids, and uh, then kind of started it back up again. So yeah. I'm MME site prep, excavating and tractor service. What area? In the Roan County. Roan County. Anderson, Morgan, that yep. area. How'd you get roped into coming down here and doing this? Well, seen you at Stowers. <laughs> I'm a subscriber to your channel and uh, seen you at Stowers. We got to talking. I said, hey, I'll come down and help you out if I can. Yeah. And I sure appreciate Mike coming down. And I'm telling you right now, I, I just mentioned there in the dozer when I was pushing that dirt around. I've never seen both machines working at the same time. And uh, it is amazing. I mean, just in a few minutes, we've been moving dirt. Uh, wow. I could have built this. If, if you'd have been here a lot sooner, we could have built this <laughs> pond a lot quicker than now. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to do some footage throughout the day, uh, different spots, and uh, I'll get the drone up here in a little while and fly the drone around a little bit. And uh, he's an operator. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm his trainee today. He is showing me what to do. That's for sure. So, and matter of fact, I told Mike, I said, if you, I said, just stop me anytime during the day and tell me what to do, and that'll be fine. So, uh, y'all stick around. It's going to be good. making some progress uh, you can kind of see now in this corner how we've got this kind of transition and uh, Mike taught me that uh, when we start in this corner right here we'll get this uh, transition fixed and then as we work around the pond uh, putting dirt in there we'll carry this same slope with us all the way around as we're working that pond dam uh, building the slope as we're doing that work now then uh, Mike's on the dozer and he's gonna knock down these piles get those down to a manageable uh, depth and then uh, the, we'll pack that in too. But we'll get a little bit of video of him running the dozer. Mike knows what he's doing, folks. He's a good one.
time for a little update now. Mike is pushing that lift in there, and when he gets that smoothed out, we will pack it, get it packed in. But if you remember just a short time ago, that big old dip that was in there that we started filling in. And there's one thing I've learned this morning is that I know about that much about dirt work. When you get a real dirt man on the scene, <laughs> you better get out of his way because uh, there's dirt going places. Wow, I, I'm impressed. Mike is, uh, is unbelievable. I mean, what his knowledge and his ability to run this equipment is uh, outstanding, actually. So uh, to give you a little update where we are and we'll keep working at this and here in a few minutes, I hope to get the drone up and uh, be able to cover both machines working at the same time and uh, we'll get that going here in just a minute. So I'll check back in with you. putting the finishing touches on this last lift and uh we're gonna stop and go get a bite to eat and uh we'll be back in just a little bit it's lunch time <laughs> <laughs> i think he's hungry matter of fact i just told him we was going to get a bite to eat and we'll be back <laughs> and what do you think hey it's moving along good well it is it's moved a you have moved more dirt in three hours <laughs> no. than i have moved in like a whole day here's the thing you've kind of hurt my feelings because I thought I knew a little bit about doing dirt work until I watched you run this dozer. And then I realized I don't know anything. This man right here is, uh, I don't even know what to say. We're gonna go get some bite to eat and we'll be back. We just had lunch. I know you can run a dozer, but can you open that gate? <laughs> YouTube viewers, that's why he's brought me here is to be the gate opener for him. We figured it out. Get that gate open, we gotta go work. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> We gotta work. <laughs> he makes a great gate Dude, opener too. Make me walk. Yeah, <laughs> you? All right, so I'm gonna tell you a story. Uh, I was on the way back over here from lunch. I, I, I told Mike, I said, you know what? When you was on that dozer pushing that dirt and working and I was on that excavator pushing dirt, I said there was a point there <laughs> When it come to it, I was like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do anymore. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there in the in excavator thinking, well, he's going to tell me to pack this dirt or put some more up there in a minute. Uh, I'm just plumb lost. I don't know what to do anymore. So uh, we're back from lunch. We're going to get on this equipment and uh, get a little bit more work done. And uh, we're about ready to call it a day. Mike's putting the last uh, leveling on that lift up there, and we'll get that one packed in, and, and we'll be done. But I'm telling you right now, wow, Mike has moved a bunch of dirt today. You know, I first uh, got here, he was bailing dirt with the excavator. What I was doing there at the end, throwing that up there, and then I would spread it out, and he would get on. He would get on the packer, pack it in, and then uh, some way or another, he got in the dozer. I don't even know how that happened. Once I saw what he could do with the dozer, that's just fine. Uh, Mike is a dozer man, that is for sure.
doing is taking the dirt that's on the back side of the spools and he's starting to create the back slope for the dam here. While I'm packing this in, that uh, gives him an opportunity to start working that in. I think we moved quite a bit of dirt for a couple of rookies. Today. <laughs> one rookie <laughs> and one expert. No. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. No. Well, you've seen TriStar digging in videos now, and now you've seen it in person. You think I'll ever make a dozer, man? Absolutely. <laughs> that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think we worked good together yeah. today. We had a good time. I enjoyed it. I appreciate you inviting me down. Yeah. I know it's kind of a gamble to turn somebody you just met loose <laughs> with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of machines and i appreciate that i always enjoy moving down. well i appreciate you coming down and the new friendship we met up there at the stowers and new friendship and i appreciate that and and you're welcome uh here anytime so uh yeah. i do have one question for you though yes, the serious question yes sir um what time are we starting on monday <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, it it was good. We had a lot of fun today and and, and enjoyed it. So uh, I, I did appreciate get it. lunch out of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he 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 got lunch, so he get that. But uh, but I needed a gate man too, man, to yeah, open the gate. Yeah, so yeah, uh, open the gate. So. Well, Mike, I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank Sam you. Michael. <laughs> hey, Mike. You left the gate open. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Had a lot of fun there with Mike uh, doing that work, and the pond job's coming along very nicely now. You saw the progress there at that point. There's one more video gonna be coming out, and I was there working today and yesterday, and probably got one more good day to get that pond uh, dam finished up, and then maybe a little bit of finish up work on, the, on Thursday. I've learned a lot in this job, and I'm really glad that I've done it to help me out in the future jobs similar to this. I appreciate you sticking around for the message, and what I wanna talk about today is hope. You know, there's a lot of people in the world today that are hoping in a lot of different things. But what I want to talk to you about is a living hope. Um, and what I mean by that is a hope that's alive. You know, there, there are thoughts and ideas of hope. Uh, I guess you would say hope of winning a lottery, of hope in this or hope in that. Things that might essentially never happen. So it realistically, that, that's a dead hope. It's hoping in something that's realistically probably never going to happen. But the hope that I want to share with you today is a living hope, a hope that is alive. And it's alive because it's promised by God. And it's promised through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at a passage of scriptures found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And it says this. It said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let's take that apart just for a second and talk about that. First of all, it's showing honor and respect and glory to God by saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledging God as the Father. And next it says, Who according to His abundant mercy, talking about God's mercy for us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, He's shown us His mercy, has begotten us again. Well, that begotten us again is talking about salvation, talking about being, as the Bible words, a church word would say, being born again. So when you come to realize who Jesus Christ is and you place your faith and trust in Him, you are essentially what the Word would say, being born again, born anew, a new person, a new creature, a new creation. The old self is dead, so to say, and the new life, the new birth is through Jesus Christ. And then it would go on to say this living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So it's talking about there, this living hope is talking about eternal life, that this living hope is eternal life with God. It's a hope that can be counted on. It's a hope that can be trusted in because God's word said it and I believe it. That's the hope that I have and the belief that I have is that whatever God says in this word, I have hope in that, a living hope. And I'm gonna trust in that with every part of who I am. You know, the other day I was talking to a guy and we were talking about hope and faith and, and how certain I was and the assurance that I have that my soul is saved, that I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and that my home is eternal in the heavens. And he said this, he said, I wish I had that hope. 
So I just simply said to him, you can have this hope, and this hope is through Jesus Christ. If you're an unbeliever, you're not trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then it, it, it's as simple as believing and trusting in him and, then, and having that assurance. The Bible says that he will place within us, upon salvation, he will place within us his spirit as a deposit of guarantee of that which is to come. So you can have that hope. I can't imagine waking up of a morning and not having the assurance that my home is eternal in the heaven and that my sins are forgiven. But a lot of folks are living that way. But you don't have to. You can simply trust and obey and believe in Jesus Christ and have that assurance that I'm talking about today. Well, I hope that message was a blessing to you. I, I hope that you're believing in Jesus Christ. If you're not, this most important decision you can ever make in your life is to simply trust in Him. So God bless you and appreciate you watching.